Hello and happy Monday. It's Leah McIntosh and this is your Empowered to Rise Mastermind Group. And this is week five. And this week we are focused on our money mindset. So this is a really important week. We are halfway through this eight week mastermind experience. So hopefully you've made significant progress on each of the steps of the blueprint of your own blueprint and of this blueprint in our mastermind so for those of you all that are here today and those that are watching the replay let me review the steps in this process so remember the first step is your story getting really clear on your story and the messages that you learn your life lessons is that have come out of that story. So that was the first week of this mastermind. We then transitioned to your message to millions. So you took that story and the lessons and you crafted a message, which is I help people do X so they can have or do Y. So again, week one was your story. Week two is your message to millions. Week three was your ideal client. We talked a lot about who is she or who is the person you are seeking to reach and really getting to know her or him intimately. Week four, which was last week, was the breakthrough conversation system with the 12 questions that you use to walk through an enrollment conversation with potential new clients. So that's what we have been working on. So hopefully by now, as a part of this mastermind, if you're doing your homework, you have got your story written out. You've got your message. You have got your ideal client identified, at least one ideal client. You've got your conversation mapped out and hopefully you've been practicing those conversations over the past week. So that's a bit of the landscape. And today we're gonna to transition to week five, which is all about your breakthrough money mindset. You should have gotten the worksheet on your email. So we're gonna use that to walk through today. So if you do have the ability to grab that worksheet and have it in front of you or on your iPad, go ahead and do that now. So again, welcome to everyone that's here. I know there are a few people that are coming in and out that are on breaks at work or on their way home. And then some of us that are at our home offices, which is really nice. So I'm glad you are here. So welcome. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will jump right in to our overview of our mastermind. So let me pull that up. Okay, so this is our Empower to Rise Mastermind. You should see that on the screen. And you can see the wonderful group of ladies that were at one of our gatherings last year. We're having our next gathering on July 28th. So I hope all of you all will be there for our superstar speaker training. It'll be at this same location. So with that, our model for our mastermind, let's read this together wherever you are. In this room is the power to change the world. In me is the power to change the world. If I'm going to change the world, I need a world of change in me. Change comes naturally, but it can also come intentionally through the power of goal setting and community. I can achieve anything I put my mind to. Everything is possible to the extent I believe it is. I want to dream wide awake as much as I do asleep. And through focused action, we can do it 30 days at a time. And that's what this mastermind is all about. And we should say seven days at a time for this mastermind because we are meeting weekly and this is week number five. So again, a mastermind, coordination of knowledge and effort of two or more people who work toward a definite purpose in the spirit of harmony. That's how Napoleon Hill captures it. What is special about a mastermind is we are learning from each other and we are growing towards the definite purpose of our life's work. Jack Boland says it this way, 
we are providing mutual support and encouragement and to believe for each other things which each alone may find difficult to conceive and believe for him or her so so that's the power of a mastermind so the purpose of this mastermind and my life's work is to create more ease and grace in the lives of leaders just like you as you pursue your life's work the vision this is how we're gonna know it's actually happening is your success is flowing without stress struggle suffering or solitude where every person has a team this is our team for community coaching and accountability and our mission the collective mission that we're all working towards is to build a business with the income and impact that you desire. My role as your coach is to help remove all excuses, escape routes, limiting beliefs, constraints, fears, doubts, worries, resistance, so you can be who you're meant to be. So on these weekly calls, we're celebrate, evaluate, teaching and coaching, and then we'll knock down those first dominoes. So that is our blueprint that we're following each week as we come together so with that i'm going to come back to our group and let's celebrate what you've experienced or happened over the last week since our last call so i'm going to open it up we've got aisha and gina that's here so go ahead and jump in welcome so who wants to go first i'll ahead. start this is aisha um, I wanted to celebrate that last week um, I made two new contacts. One, um, I reached out to them and one found me on um, Nonprofit um, Connect. And it's actually exciting because that was a district that I was planning to expand into after, you know, I got my district set up and they're already asking me to come and work with their fourth and fifth grade girls. So I thought that that was pretty amazing and I'm just excited about that. Yay! <laughs> so we celebrate mm -hmm. with you, Aisha. Thank so you. So tell us a bit more. So what's your posting on Nonprofit Connect that one of the folks saw? Actually, it was just my business information. Um, and I, I need to update it, but I didn't realize people were looking at it already because I, um, I just got connected with them like two weeks ago. So they're already finding my information out there. So that tells me that I need to get out there and update it and make sure I have updated business information. Wonderful. And can you send the link to Nonprofit Connect for others that might be interested in sharing their information on there as well? Yes. And I actually heard about it um, from Gina. And okay. it was, it's a like a it's a membership program. Mm -hmm. But yes, I can definitely do that. So I think awesome. yes. <laughs> um, great. So getting the word out to new folks that you are talking to and some new interests. So yay! <laughs> so what's your next step in connecting with those and having conversations? Uh, one is a um, one is a Christian group. And she has girls already. So I have an event on um, Saturday and she's going to bring them out to the uh, event. And then the other is an after school program and they want me to come once a week. And they were saying that, you know, that they would pay me to come once a week to work with their girls. So the after school program, it won't start until the school year, but the, uh, the Christian program, we're actually going to meet up this week. Okay. Exciting. And what do you have going on this weekend? I have, it's just a, a two hour event for girls to come right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just kind of testing the waters and seeing, you know, how many girls I could get to come on a Saturday and if I want to expand those hours or if I want to just keep it as an after school program. Okay. Excellent. So some experimentation happening. Okay. Yes. That's exciting. That's really wonderful. And that's how we learn. It's just by yeah. trying it and seeing what might happen. And yeah. one thing leads to the next. So great job, Aisha. Thank you. Yay. And Gina, how about you? I, can you hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, well, I'm glad you made that connection, Aisha. I think that'll be a nice resource. Um, okay, I had several things because I had a really good week, and I'll make them brief. 
The first was my um, coaching call with you, Leah. I just felt like it really got me past a hurdle in understanding how to launch the side project I want to do, which is the oral history project with women in midlife and letting that be the thing I'm playing with and enjoying. So I feel like I got a good um, head around how I can proceed with that and play with it and not make it so intense. Um, and because and it kind of gave me that direction, I, was, I feel like I was re able to reapply myself to the business that I'm currently making money in, which is my nonprofit consulting. And um, the first thing with that is that I decided to go ahead and purchase a um, subscription to like the best grants database that you can subscribe to and it's a lot of money and I've been putting it off but it's like the gold standard and so now that I've been using it for several days I just realized it's incredibly impactful on my business and I can offer so much more to clients because I have it it's just it's a core piece of something I needed to invest in so I'm excited about that and then um, I'm also getting excited again about potentially, as part of my business, launching a website that would be, it's, I named it a long time ago, Quick Dirty Fundraising, but I put it off because I didn't know if I wanted to do this work. But now I feel more excited about modules I could offer through the Blueprint that people could um, get my expertise through the website and also purchase products from it. And then the very final thing, which was, so awesome is my client, one of my clients, I just dearly, dearly love her. And I know that she has lacked access to funding because she doesn't have the access to the resources, even though she's doing an incredible work. And so that's like my, my sweet spot with a client, the exact client I want to help. And she just confirmation that her grant went through and she's going to get like $400,000. So, um, husband is working with her too in his business so he did a lot of like the help and pushing it through but we're just really 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 excited for her that's all <laughs> <laughs> that is huge wow how exciting yay we celebrate you so with you gina <laughs> those are amazing accomplishments over the last week and it reminds me that sometimes we don't see the fruit of the labor until later and you're actually seeing those outcomes now yes and that is super exciting and you are courageous and moving forward and investing in yourself and your business and that's a recipe for success thank you very much <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> So we're doing the happy dance, we're clapping. So wonderful. Um, and Gina, one question for you. As you got clarity about your oral history project, you said, I'm now able, you're able to focus on your for-profit business because you have more clarity about that passion project. So speak to that again, because there are a lot of people who are in between. You still kind of, doing a base business, a nine to five, but really got this passion project on the side. So how do you balance those two? And so for people that don't know, my business is really my job. I just, it's, it's like if I were employed and was sitting and doing a job every day while I waited on doing my passion project, that's this. I'm not, my day to day when I do fundraising is not the thing that I'm fully passionate about. So how I've sort of transitioned that is getting really particular about the clients I want to serve to create that passion. Like I want to serve people like Aisha and I want to serve people like Deborah that I just got the big grant for. Um, but how I, I, I think the thing is like, because that's going, because I'm able to get what I, the resources I need out of my job, as far as I'm getting some of the money I want, I'm getting some of the connection to, to my passion. Um, and know that my financial peace is secure. The oral history project, I don't, I mean, I just, I just think that the oral history project is something that I recognize. Oh gosh, I mean, I don't know exactly, I know what you're asking, but it's kind of hard to explain because I know people are kind of stuck in some jobs that they don't love. But I, I, I guess I would say I've taken care of my basic needs first. So my job that I'm working every day is giving me the money and some of the passion 
and it's secure. And so I'm investing in those pieces to make those pieces secure. And because of that, it's giving me the headspace and the room to say, the oral history project I can play with and it can be fun. And I know it will lead to something. I don't know. I don't feel like I answered that very well. But, and you did, you said, one of the key phrases you said, I have the headspace to play around with the project because you've got your financial base secure. And that's yeah. really honest to say in the meantime, so in this in-between time before the passion project is something you dedicate yourself fully to, if it ever becomes that, you have a financial base that meets your needs, that allows you to invest in some of your projects you just want to play with. Right. And that's a good thing. So I want to tell everybody, it is okay to work a nine to five, have a job. It is okay if that works for you to be able to fund some of the other things you want to do. And when we all get to that place where we have to make a change, we'll know from the inside that it's time to shift and focus in one direction or another. But it is okay. So uh, thank you, Gina, for sharing your experience and your passion. And Aisha, we celebrate with you both this week. Amazing progress. And for all of those that are watching the video, please share with us your progress that you're making so that we can celebrate with you as well. One of the things I'll celebrate is I um, signed up a new coaching client over the last week. And what was interesting about this is it's a woman and she's from Maryland and she connected with me on Instagram. So um, I started trying out some new marketing on Instagram, connected with her. She was looking for a coach and we just connected pretty quickly and we're going to be working on building her business. So she's going to be a one-on-one -on -one coaching client and uh, hopefully she'll get um, involved in one of our groups as well and get to know the rest of our mastermind that we're growing. So I'm excited about that. And she is an artist. So she does photography and she paints and she writes. So she's really creative, like a lot of the group here. So I'm looking forward to learning with her as well. So thank you. And today uh, is about our money mindset. So we're going to jump into that topic and we're going to talk through. So if you've got something to write with, we're going to be doing some of the exercises and talking about money. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share the worksheet that I sent out earlier today. And we'll just walk through that together. Module five, how to develop your breakthrough money mindset. So I'm going to read through a bit of this and hit some of the highlights. And then we're going to stop along the way and just talk about your money mindset. So the purpose of this worksheet that everyone should have in their inbox is so you can break through any of the limiting beliefs that you might have about money and create the thriving business that you're craving. So to have a successful business monetarily, it all starts with your money. And I want to say that really clearly because sometimes we skirt around the topic of money. In other words, here's a really simple way to understand it. How you view money, what you think about money, our opinions of wealthy people and our overall relationship with money impacts our ability to thrive financially. So to the extent we have a healthy relationship with money, we'll be able to generate money to invest in people and projects and changing the world, which is really what we're called to do. So look at it this way. If you're constantly thinking about money as negative or a burden and attaching negative energy to it, then what happens is it's always gonna be less than we desire. So we want to look at the thoughts that we're having about money, whether we say it or not, those thoughts are in our head. One of the books um, that helps us with our money mindset is called How Rich People Think by Steve Siebel. And this quote really captured um, an important point for me. 
your current financial status will give you an idea of your past thinking. Wow. That just made me stop in my tracks. Your current financial status will give you an idea of your past thinking because we're creating this as we go. So if we're unhappy, if you're unhappy with your bank account, whatever it is, there's probably something that's been holding you back from making the money you desire. Now, um, and I'll share a bit of my test, my personal testimony about money, but it is so true. If I look at where I'm at today financially, it is a reflection of how I thought about money over the past several years and what really held me back from soaring. And so as I've been able to break through some of those mindsets, I'm able to gain new clients, reach new markets, have new thoughts. And sometimes we think, oh, we don't have an issue with money, but trust me, we can all continue to uncover the ways we think about money so we can hit the next financial milestone. Because for some of us, we're trying to get to $1,000 a month in our business. But imagine what it takes to get to 10,000 a month and $50,000 a month and well beyond that. Our money mindset has got to transform at, to go to the next level of our results. So that's what this is about, opening up our eyes to see in a new way. So um, let me tell you a bit about my money beliefs. So I grew up with a father who was an entrepreneur and he was an attorney, but he never liked working for other people. He always wanted to work for himself. So, and some of what he taught me about money was good. He instilled that entrepreneurship in me, but some of what I learned wasn't so helpful. I also learned by watching TV, like the Huxtables. Maybe you, you watched that in the 80s and 90s, and I thought, wow, Black people that were successful either had to be doctors or lawyers or some profession like that. But the reality is when I looked around my neighborhood, most of my friends' parents were going to work, coming home, and living a pretty basic and boring life. Now that was okay, but I always had this sense that there was a bigger world out there, that there was something more that we weren't experiencing because I saw more on TV and I read more in books and our life just, just wasn't very exciting. But what I saw my parents do and my friends' parents is to go work a nine to five if they were lucky for 30 years or more and go pursue somebody else's vision until they would retire and hopefully they would have some money and be able to do some of the things they wanted. And that's what my parents instilled in me, my mother in particular, um, to go the safe route, stay with the company, look forward to retirement. So here's the point, is our money stories are set when we are children. And for me, and I don't know if, if you feel the same way, many of those beliefs no longer serve us as adults, especially as successful women entrepreneurs. So here's some of the money beliefs that I grew up with, and I'm going to ask you to share yours. I learned, and I can remember my, my parents saying this, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, I learned that money struggle is just a part of life. Pretty much everybody that I knew struggled with money, and we were living check to check. We did okay, but there was always the sense of, are we going to have enough at the end of the month? I grew up in a family that believed in God deeply, and I would hear things at church and in school like, God will meet all of our needs, but not our wants. So there was this sense of there were limits to what we could have or what we could do, or even what we should want. I learned work hard and everything's going to be okay. And I also learned that the love of money is the root of all evil. And although that one word, love of money, is, is what it says in the Bible, what I learned was that having a lot of money leads to evil. So all of those were in the background. For the most part, I didn't even know that they were there. 
So now fast forward years later and it's 2004 and I'm working in a corporate job making six figures. I have an MBA and my life was pretty good. My husband and I, we were building our home. We had two cars in the driveway and some money in the bank, but I knew deep down inside there was something more that that wasn't the fullness of my path. But the only problem was I didn't really know what that path was. So in my thirties, I'm going through this midlife crisis and I end up leaving that corporate job, getting a master's of divinity, becoming a pastor. And deep down inside, I thought that's going to solve all my problems. I'm going to be deeply fulfilled and all my dreams will come true. But even after that, I knew there was more and this wasn't the fullness of my path. Eventually, here's what started happening for me as I started listening to my intuition. The voice within me calling me to do more and to be more. And that's when I started building my coaching business intentionally and focusing on equipping other leaders. The only problem was that I wasn't reaching my financial dreams by doing that on the side every now and then. So those money beliefs were still haunting me. I knew I was meant for more, but my path forward was still foggy. Fast forward to 2015, and I was on a business trip in Nashville when at that moment I knew I just couldn't continue to go through the motion. I knew I was destined to coach and fully commit to it. And that was my something big. At that point, I didn't know how to create a sustainable business. I didn't know how to do social media marketing. And I wasn't really sure that I was going to make much money doing this. I thought, yeah, this could really be something, but I didn't know the real potential in my life as an entrepreneur. At that point, a coach said to me, do you know how many people stop right before things are about to happen? And I decided that would not be me, that I would just keep going. And I know that in business, as an entrepreneur, some people never hit the big financial goals that they set for themselves and they quit. And you know what? I don't blame them because being in business for ourselves can feel heavy and it's tricky to figure out exactly what the next steps are. And sometimes we doubt ourselves and whether we're on the right path and are we smart enough, qualified enough, pretty enough. Trust me, I've had all of those doubts. But by grace, during those moments where I could have given up or when I've got, I got the nose to something that I really thought would have been perfect, there were people around me that said, keep going. <laughs> And part of my journey has been learning more about my own money story, which I didn't even think I had. I didn't think I had issues with money. But what I had to realize is that to reach financial freedom, to get completely out of debt and have consistent money rolling in so I could have the freedom of time, I had to face my money story. I committed to coaching, reading the books, watching YouTube videos, and developing my own money mindset. And that's what this guide, that's what this week is all about. So here's the point. All wealth creation starts with your money mindset. To have an abundant mindset around money leads to creating businesses that are sustainable and can flourish. So here's my hope and my intention for you and for me, is we can have clients consistently coming through the door, emailing us, uh, texting us, calling us. We're able to drop our debt, the shame that comes with that, and forgive ourselves for whatever lessons we've learned along the way. We can stop being anxious about paying bills. We can invest in our dreams, work with a coach, join masterminds like this, and invest in the technology that it takes. And that's what we're doing in this group. We've heard several examples of that today. I also want you to have the confidence to put yourself out there and have a greater impact on the world than we ever thought was possible. You can have the life that you want, full of travel and freedom and joy and whatever it is you're dreaming about, 
is possible. So here's the steps that we're going to go through. So, and as you can see, as I was working on this worksheet today, I kept going back about the steps. So we're going to go through, it's actually about five steps. And so I'll reorder this on our worksheet, but we're going to uncover the money story that's keeping you broke because I've been there. The fears about money, beliefs about wealth, beliefs about success. And then we're going to transition to transforming that mindset to make millions, which opens up an abundant flow of money for your success, for your business, for whatever you're dreaming about. So Marianne Williamson in her work, The Law of Divine Compensation, and she's got several other books and teachings. She says this. The universe is programmed to support your happiness. And one of the ways it does this is by arranging events so that you won't have to worry about money. So why is that statement so important? Because you have more important things to do. And this becomes our motivation for making money. It's not just a habit, but it's so we don't have to think about it. And it simply is a tool that's working with Without us having to put so much effort in to better all the things in your life in the world that you desire so that's what this is about so let's start with step one part one is your money story I told you a bit about mine in your money story but let me give you another analogy this is like weight loss so think about this Maybe you have a major sugar craving. Like me, peach cobbler is one of my favorites. We have got to dig into really what's behind this. So if we're trying to lose weight, what's really behind this is trying to break our sugar cravings and be able to walk past the peach cobbler when it's not good for us. So we wanna be honest about what we're going through our money story so we can make more money and actually achieve the goals that we desire. So remember some of the common negative money stories that I've heard and that I've gone through are listed here. So I want you to take a moment, whether you're live or you're watching this replay, and I want you to put a check next to the statements that resonate with you. Okay, so let's take a minute read through those statements and if they resonate with you go ahead and put a check mark next to them and i'll read them i'm bad with money i can't save i never have enough i can't make enough i feel guilty and ashamed of my debt making money means that i'm taking it from someone real success is hard to achieve I'm bad at paying off debt. Saving money is a struggle. You can always get it cheaper. Money doesn't grow on trees. Living within your means is the best way to live. God doesn't want us to have money. Only other people can be rich. You should make a lot of money by helping people. I never have enough money for what I want. Life is too expensive. So here's my question for you. Which money stories above resonate with you and how does that make you feel? So I'm going to invite the folks that are here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to come back. So for those of you that are here, um, type in the chat or unmute your phone and tell me what, which of those statements resonate with you and how does it make you feel? I think uh, this is Aisha. Sorry. Yes. I think the um, the one that really gets me, and I I think it all the time is, um, you shouldn't make a lot of money by helping people. And I guess, you know, that's. It's not that I truly believe that. It's just that, I guess I, only think that about me. I don't know why, <laughs> but I only think that about me. I mean, I see people who are helping people and. I believe that, you know, when you put your all, you know, all your talents and everything that you do into helping people, why shouldn't you be compensated for that? And it's just, I think that's just a mentality that, you know, 
I don't know where it came from. Um, I mean, I guess it could be a family thing um, because my family was very helpful to each other. You know, everyone, if somebody didn't have something, you know, you can always depend on an aunt or uncle or my grandparents. So maybe that was something that, you know, was um, ingrained in me in that way. And I'm a dreamer. I believe that, you know, it's possible to have success, but I don't know where that came from. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Aisha. Mm -hmm. And part of uncovering this money story is discovering where it came from. And as you start working through the worksheet, one of the questions that comes a little bit after this says, what did you learn about money from watching your mother and father or grandparents or siblings? Mm -hmm. And as we start to make those connections, it triggers a memory and we think, aha, that's mm -hmm. where I heard that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I remember. And now I understand why I feel guilty charging for the benefits that I'm offering to other people. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's really common for us as women, especially if we've got a nonprofit, mm -hmm. inherent in a nonprofit, for most of us is we can't make a lot of money like mm -hmm. we're, we're not in this to make money so we we get a nonprofit because we're not in it to make money but then mm -hmm. we need revenue to invest back into it for it to grow to impact people which is what a nonprofit is all about right so thank you mm -hmm. so what and so as you um, work with that today let's keep thinking about that one statement and how we're going to remake that that thought in that statement. Okay. okay. So Jean, if you're able to share, which of those money stories stuck out for you and how does it make you feel? Probably all of them except maybe two. <laughs> so, um, I, I could have substituted my parents and myself right into your story. Leah is like exactly the same. And, um, but I think the ones that have been the ones I've had to tackle the hardest and starting my own thing and also being a nonprofit for a dozen years are the ones around, if I make money, I'm taking it from someone else, like Aisha said. And also the one about God doesn't want us to have money, even though, even though I'm not religious, um, I definitely grew up in a religious household. And um, so those, those have been the hardest. When my husband and I went through the recession, we lost everything. That was probably my biggest fear, and I had to go through it anyway. <laughs> so a lot of my money mindset has changed just out of necessity because I recognize I can be as careful as I want. It doesn't guarantee anything. Mm. Um, but I still have that. It's still that scarcity mindset is hard to overcome. And um you know, what Aisha said resonated with me and what I've tried to tell people as I'm coaching them is you should demand what you're worth even in nonprofit because nonprofit is like the poster child for the scarcity mindset. And the problem is that it recreates the idea in everything from foundations to professional, you know, employees' minds that um, we can't get what we're worth but then when we don't get what we're worth, we don't stay. And when we don't stay, nonprofit organizations collapse. So nonprofit is really an unhealthy industry. Mm -hmm. And so I can see evidence all along the chain where that mindset is damaging from individual all the way into my profession. And it just, it has, you can't, you can't, you know, getting past that is absolutely necessary. And I love, oh, this, is, this is my bumper sticker logic because I literally saw it on a bumper sticker, but I love it, is um, how to make, or make a living, not a killing. Hmm. And okay, I think it's totally okay if you make a killing in your, in your life, but even just allowing ourselves to make a living mm -hmm. is hard because my living includes things like I want to travel and I want to be able to pay for my kids school and I want to be able to not second guess the dollar aisle at Target like these are okay things <laughs> and what kind of living do I really need to experience life to the fullest and 
And we don't, I don't, you know, that's a way new thought process for me. Beautiful. Well said. And um, Aisha posed a question. Um, we're asking people to invest in our business. And the question, Aisha, you raised is aren't people who are in business the same? They're asking people to invest in their business. So, one just kind of shift in the way we're thinking about that. We're not investing people to invest in our business, whether we're for profit or nonprofit. We are inviting them to invest in themselves. And that's, for me, that was one of those big mindset shifts. Uh, when I invite people to the superstar speaker training, I'm not asking them to come for me. I'm not asking them to pay $99 to see me. I'm inviting them to invest in themselves. And, and they are worth it. So as we make that shift, all of a sudden, it opens up. And, and you named it, Gina, an abundant pathway to make big ass of people, to make big investments in, their, in themselves and in their own dreams that they might never be able to do on their own. And the only way we can do that is if we're also living that life. So these mindsets and us working through them are so important because they'll, they'll keep blocking our ability to help other people. So the very mission that we're trying to do, we're trying to help empower other people. If we're not living that way, it'll compromise our ability to do that work. And I also tell people often, um, let's say a workshop or a coaching experience or technology, Gina, that you just invested in. If we won't make the investment in ourselves and our own business, we cannot ask other people to invest that themselves. We simply will not be able to do it with integrity over time. So it's like being a coach. I can't ask people, I can't invite them to have a coach, to have me as their coach, if I don't have a coach. So there's some, some integrity in our, the ways we think about money and the way we live our life and lead our business. That's really important. So thank you both for sharing. Um, let's go to part two. So I'm going to go back and share my screen again, and we're going to continue to look at these questions. So the next question that's before us, okay, let's go to part two. Part two is around fear about money. So I once had a coach say, um, around, and this is around fear that unless someone is about to break into your house or there's a tiger about to attack you, you're not allowed to be scared. And that really stuck with me because there are moments that I've been scared about making big investments in my business and in my life, especially around you know money and finances. And sometimes that stopped me. And, and I also heard this phrase that says, you can either be scared or be free. But we can't live in fear and freedom at the same time. It can't exist in the same space. I remember for me being scared that I would dishonor God if I focused too much on making money. And, and yet through this journey, I realized God wanted me to maximize my gifts and live an abundant life in spirit, body, soul, and finances. So there's this big mindset shift that has to happen, especially around God, our creator, the universe. Instead of worrying and feeling guilty, we shift that energy towards abundance. That, that God's purpose for us is abundant life. And as we live an abundant life, we share that abundance. We invite other people into that abundance, that life. So if we stay in scarcity, 
we're going to perpetuate scarcity in our business and in our lives. And that's what we're breaking. So here's the question around fear. What are your core fears about money? When did you start having them and how have they affected your life? And what would your life look like without those fears? So I want to invite you to answer any or all of those questions around your fears about money. And then we're going to transition to wealth. So let's stop there. And Gina, you mentioned that your one of your biggest fears around money actually came true. And so tell me through that experience now, um, how's that impacted you? And what is your uh, life like beyond those fears? Well, I think when I when we got back on steady ground, um, I still had fears around money, but the big shift because I didn't want to, I don't want it to happen again. The big shift for me was recognizing it did happen and we went through it and we survived and everything was okay. And um, so the biggest shift I've seen in the ways that money has manifested for me, even over the last seven or eight months, because like this is this is the main thing that drives me i think is that idea that again you can have all of your ducks in a row you can work your 30-year job you can do all of the things you need to do wisely and we're not in an economy anymore where that's a guarantee i mean we're really not in an economy now <laughs> where that's a guarantee so with that um kind of giving myself permission that it's okay to take risk and my risks are limited in the sense that, again, I'm starting by asking for what I need first. So when I started my business, I knew here's the number, here's the amount every month that I need. And once I saw that I was able to bring that in fairly easily, just based on my connections and probably my, you know, my reputation and my real actual passion about helping people, scaling from there has also been relatively easy because it yeah it's like once you let go of a lot of those fears the work doesn't feel like work anymore mm -hmm. and I know what I need as a baseline that's that baseline I need to get rid of a lot of the fears then I have the freedom to move beyond that and really push my boundaries more mm -hmm. absolutely thank you Gina and I, I love that you, you keep bringing us back to th there is no safety, even in uh, what we perceive as safe jobs. And, and by that, it's working for someone else. No matter what the industry, there is no safety in playing small. And I say that intentionally, to settle for us that are called, <laughs> To, to be dreamers, like Aisha said, to see a big vision and work towards that. Playing small is settling for just working towards somebody else's vision. And there is no safety in that. And in fact, it actually is a path to misery because inside of us, we're still being called to more. We still have these big dreams. And the more we just push them aside, the more we live in bondage. So thank you, Gina, for reminding us of that. Thank you. Aisha, what about you and fears about money? I think you all just said it. Um, I, around March, I was, you know, I'm a teacher. So I was thinking that I wasn't going to return to the classroom. I was going to start working on, you know, my program full time. And it actually happened where my district was my, they were planning to get rid of my position, but my principals, you know, fought to keep me and the other person who were, who was a reading teacher. And I thought about that and thought about it. And I, I, I know now I stayed because I was grateful, you know, that they thought well enough to fight for me. But, you know, even now, sometimes I think, you know, I was supposed to leave this year. But 
even now I can still see God lining things up to where, you know, next year, you know, I'll be working on these things full time. This is, I'll be working on Jewel. I'll be working on, you know, the Butterfly Literacy Group full time. So I can actually see those, you know, things that are lining up. Hmm. So my fear was, you know, if I left my job, you know, will we have the money to cover what we needed to? And I, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have let that stop me. Mm-hmm. So I've, you know, I've signed my contract and I'm going to be committed and this is going to be my best year ever. <laughs> but I, I probably should have been going toward what I, what I know I was supposed to. And Aisha, I really appreciate you being transparent about that mm-hmm. because for all of us, there's this in-between time where we're trying to discern, do I go this way or do I go that way? And when do I let this thing completely go and go full-fledged towards the other? And there's an in-between time. Mm -hmm. And what I love about what you're doing is you're working towards your vision right now. So even though you're going to be teaching this year, you are working towards. It has a different purpose now than it did potentially before you fully committed to following this dream and impacting lives. Yes. That's courageous. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So let's take those money beliefs and even some of those fears. And now let's look at our thoughts about wealth. So all of us, just like we learned about money in a negative sense, we also learned about wealth and, and have some perceptions around it. So let me share my screen. We're going to look at wealth and success and what we learned about that. And uh, the models of success and wealth that we encountered, even as children, impact us today. So here's um, what I want to challenge you to do and even think back a bit. But this week, as you hear about money, because now that we're talking about it, we're going to see stuff all around. As you experience life and you see TV or movies, here's what I'm going to predict. You're going to see a money pattern. And what you're going to notice is that evil, selfish, manipulative characters are wealthy. And the poor person is often portrayed as humble or kind or oppressed in their circumstances. And it seems like, and I think there's something about our culture today, there's not much middle ground. Either it's you're super rich and you're selfish and you only care about yourself, or you're poor and you're stuck and there's nothing you can do about it. And maybe you're humble and kind, but you're stuck in your circumstances. So next week, I want want you all to share with me what you found. And here's why I think that matters to us right now is we aren't going to make more money if we believe making money is wrong or there are limits to how much we should make. So we need to really look into our core beliefs about wealthy people and even success. So my question is, what do you believe about people with a lot of money and where did that come from? So also let's apply that to ourself and our belief about success. So regardless of whether you plan to start a business when you were young, and some of us were entrepreneurs, you know, with businesses, even when we were in grade school, or you're the accidental entrepreneur, we all have some deep beliefs about success. Again, that probably were seated when we were young. And those beliefs we have got to acknowledge and bring to the surface if they aren't serving us so that we can hit our financial milestones and impact people's lives in our own life. So likewise, here's the question for us. What do you believe about your ability to be wealthy and your potential to earn as much money as you want? And what you believe about serving others and money? So let me put those questions out there. The first is, what do you believe about people who have a lot of money and then secondly what do you believe about yourself and your ability to be wealthy 
So let's use our chat for this one. I'm going to invite you, if you're able, to go ahead and type in the chat. What do you believe about people with a lot of money? And then what do you believe about your self? So take a moment and answer those questions. And when you're ready, Okay, so Gina shares, um, I have a negative reaction to people with a lot of money. The way we talk about people like that in my family social circle is, yes, they're wealthy, but they are the nice ones, as if there has to be a clarifier, because naturally people with money are greedy and out of touch. Thank you. Aisha writes, I think that people who have a lot of money are blessed and that they can enjoy a certain type of lifestyle. So look at that in the spectrum of what we think about people with money. It's all over the board. Um, for me, when I think about money, I always thought, maybe sim similar to Aisha, um, wow, you know, they, they must have just done something right or they were born into the right family because being wealthy is really out of reach. It's the exception, not what most of us can achieve. And I'm just the average girl from St. Louis that just tried to do the right things. And I always wonder, am I included? Could I actually be wealthy? That was part of my money mindset. And Gina, a lot like you, there were always these people that we called them snobs because they had money and we felt like, oh, they, they couldn't relate to the common person. Aisha shares, you always wanted to be wealthy, but doubted if it was possible. Absolutely. I can identify with that. And once we start to uncover these mindsets and we can say, wait a minute. One of the things we realize if it's, it's possible for that person, then why not me? <laughs> If we have a God of abundance, then why not us? Why would we limit the blessings that we believe are really possible for us? Why would we do that? But that's what it's all about in uncovering these money mindsets. So now let's look at that second question. That second question was about what do we believe about ourselves now, about our ability to be wealthy? So, do you believe that you deserve and are able to be wealthy? And we're defining wealthy in this sense that you're living an abundant life. We have more than enough to share with others and to bless the world and to invest back in our businesses and our family. Do you believe that you deserve it and it's possible and it will be? Thank you, Aisha. You said, I will be. I will be wealthy. Absolutely. And here's how I also want us to reframe this about wealth is I am wealthy and it's just growing and it's just expanding. So we walk around knowing I am wealthy, I live an abundant life and it's just gonna continue to grow so we can impact more lives, do more good work in the world and just see it keep expanding. That's an abundant life. That's a wealthy life. Okay, so thank you for sharing. And, okay, 
let's keep going. Let's go back to our worksheet. We've got a few more pieces that we want to get to for today. Okay, so we've talked about our money story, fears, wealth, success, and now let's talk about how we transform any of those mindsets that we want to move beyond. So imagine we're making the shift towards a breakthrough money mindset. Imagine for you being able to take the trips you've been dreaming of now instead of waiting to make more money, paying off debt and student loans, selling out your live events and your group coaching programs, celebrating five-figure income months and beyond, having the freedom to spend more time with your family, leaving your nine to five and creating wealth for your dreams, not someone else's. Being able to hire a team to do so to do for you so you can focus on what truly lights up, lights you up in your business. That's what living this wealthy, abundant life is about, and it is possible. So let's transform our money mindset. So here's my invitation. And we're going to just take one or two examples given our time. So I want you to write down, instead of five, take a couple of your top or most powerful negative money beliefs you currently possess. And you write them below. And then we're going to literally flip the switch and change that statement. So here's an example. Wanting money means I'm greedy. We remake that to mean or to say wanting money means I'm normal and fabulous. So it is okay to have the desire for money because of the outcomes it helps us achieve. Imagine the statement, life is too expensive. We remake that to say, I always have enough money for all of my desires and the life I want. So now's your turn. I'm gonna invite you to type in the chat what your statement is, and then remake that statement. So for Gina and Aisha, you both chose a money statement at the beginning of our conversation that was a limiting belief, something negative about money, and go ahead and remake one or two of those statements and type those, type those into the chat. And then we'll share those. So Gina shares, we can't do that because we don't have the money <laughs> to how can we do that? Love that example. And I have one of those examples. Our kids, um, they've been wanting to go to Disney for the last couple of years. And I have just been hesitant. I already know it's $5,000 to go to Disney. And in five days, that is gone. <laughs> and so um, part of what we've negotiated is that I'm not saying no, but we're saying, how can we do that for less than $5,000? <laughs> and also uh, in creative ways. So you're right, when we shift that mindset to we can't do that, to how do we do that? Yeah, we can do that. It's really a powerful shift. Yeah, and training our kids to think that way, absolutely. Um, and it's really empowering to not tell ourselves no it's yeah how can we make that happen let's go figure it out let's get creative let's be resourceful so we can live the life we're created for aisha says real success is hard to believe transforming that to say i can achieve anything that i can imagine absolutely i can achieve anything that i can imagine imagination comes from God. Here's my belief. We didn't just dream up these things that we are imagining are possible. They are planted within us and are there to be manifest. Now we might never get to the place where we hoped. We might never change a million lives ourselves, but it's a domino effect. The work that we do impacts a person that impacts a person that impacts a person that impacts a million lives. Another um, statement, you should make a lot of money by helping people. 
Two, my talent is priceless. It will produce more talented people. And that is worthy to be invested in, Aisha. It is priceless. Gina says, I love that. I do too. <laughs> that is amazing. So see what's happening is we're acknowledging our money mindsets and our limiting beliefs and we are remaking it. We are claiming an abundant, wealthy, successful mindset. And this is how we lean into wildly successful businesses. So back at our worksheet, great work. How did that feel? Um, I hope it's feeling empowering. And I hope that it becomes normal that we begin to take a limiting belief and affirm a positive belief so that we no longer believe, even if it's a thought, we don't have to believe it. We can cast it down and replace it. We can flip the switch immediately when those fears or negative thoughts begin to come up. You have a choice. You can learn to transform your thoughts about money instead of getting sucked into the drama of limiting thoughts. So here's an example. When those limiting beliefs come up, we can say, hmm, isn't that interesting that this belief about me not being able to make money keeps coming up? Where's that coming from? So we can step outside of ourselves and say, okay, that thought came up. Let me identify it and let me flip it. So here are a couple other strategies that have helped me. And this is a journey for all of us, but money mantras and picking a phrase that resonates with you is a way to keep affirming this. So you created some new beliefs, even in what you just shared. And these are a few more that we want to go around affirming to ourselves. I always have enough money for all of my desires. We can, we can figure this out. I'm created for an abundant life. Making money is easy. It doesn't have to be hard. I grew up with the limiting beliefs that you had to work, work, work really, really hard to make money. And I choose to believe now because I know it to be true. Making money is easy when we get into a flow of sharing our gifts with the world and inviting people to do the same. I'm wealthy. I see myself with seven figures of income, over a million dollars to meet those needs and to share. I am rich. Abundance is my natural state. Money flows easily to me. I feel good about money and deserve it in my life. These are the mantras that we want to keep telling ourselves. Every day is a wealthy day. It's safe for me to have money and I choose wealth and abundance. Take a post-it note and post these around the house or on your mirror or in your planner. Make an audio recording of these phrases. Journal and write the mantras down 20 times a day over and over again. Set an alarm on your phone to remind you to repeat that phrase and pray over it. One of the other ways to get this mindset seeped into us is to pay attention to the words we're using. And if the words evoke a negative feeling, we want to remake them. So expensive and debt and budget and that costs too much and don't waste money, all of those we can replace. And an example is I try to use the word investment especially when I'm inviting people into a coaching relationship. I never say it costs this much. I invite people to make an investment in themselves. And what that does for me is it not only um, hopefully helps the person I'm talking to think about investing in a different way than they might have thought about, but it also reinforces for me and empowers me because I also keep investing in myself. So what words will you replace starting today? I want to invite you to type that in the chat. 
what words will you replace starting today? We're replacing expensive with valuable. Ooh, I love that. Ooh, that ev ev evokes a totally different feeling inside. It's valuable. There's great value. When we value things, we easily invest in them. We easily nurture them. We honor them. I love that. Um, one of the things I'm replacing with budget is a spending plan. So from a budget, which for me feels really limiting to a spending plan, which means I am free to spend money and I am being intentional about how I do that. So keep thinking of the words that you want to replace. A spending plan. Wonderful. So let's keep moving forward. And there are just a couple of more sheets in our workbook today. And our financial abundance plan. So this will be your homework for next week is to take this financial abundance plan and you want to identify where you are today in your income, where you want to be in six months and where you'll be in 12 months. So you're setting an intention. So today, if you're making $100, six months, you might wanna be at 500, 12 months, you might wanna be at 5,000. So go ahead and set those intentions. That's the income. You wanna identify where you're at on expenses. As a result, what your profit is. So notice, we don't just wanna make money, we wanna make profit. <laughs> So we want to be aware of what it's costing us to do business. And sometimes we fail to acknowledge all of the costs because if you're like me, I will purchase a book and not track it as an expense for my business. And then it becomes tax time. And I realize, oh yeah, that was a business expense. So I want to be mindful for my business of what, what I'm making, what I'm spending, and what my profit actually is. And you've heard it said, not all, good, all, not all business is good business. That means some business just isn't worth it because it's not as profitable as we would like it. The other measures I wanna suggest is the number of subscribers on your email list. We get to build a relationship with people and having their email and being able to communicate with them is really important. And in the world of online business, your most valuable capital are your subscribers to your email list and the relationship we build with them. Okay, so that's one of the things that I'm working on. I wanna invite you to set goals as well. The number of paying clients that you have, your personal debt, your business debt, and then the number of networking events that you attended. And that might be on a weekly or a monthly basis. So one of my priorities in the coming months is to attend more networking events to meet people outside of my usual circle. So I don't know about you, but I can sort of get set in talking with the same people or simply building relationships using social media or online and I realized I've got to dedicate more intentional time to going to networking events and meeting people face to face. So that's one of the goals I want to invite you to. And notice that there's some empty spaces there on your financial abundance plan that you can fill in with your own goals, whatever they may be. Okay. And here's the second tool. It's your profit pipeline. So I shared this a couple of weeks ago, but I reformatted it to make it a bit easier for you to fill out. 
So what we want to start thinking about, and we'll get into this in the coming weeks, is you have a pipeline or a funnel is another way to think about it. And imagine you're looking for the ways that you're going to meet new people, build relationships, and invite them to be a client of yours or to come to a program. So the engagement is what we want to always be looking for. So for example, you might engage people on social media. So you might be engaging with a certain number of people. That price is zero. And the revenue is zero, but that's okay because you are engaging new people. Some of the other ways you can make profit is through live events. So you want to set a goal of the number of people you want to engage at your event. What that price or investment, that's a better word, right? An investment that they will make in that event and what your revenue will be. Again, remember, you, you want your profit pipeline to add up to the revenue goal that you set your profit goal in your financial abundance plan. So if that is six figures, it's $100,000 or $200,000, you want to have a plan in this profit pipeline to deliver that revenue goal, that profit goal that you set. So here's a mixture, live events, your books, group coaching programs, one-to-one -one coaching, speaking event, consulting clients, whatever that is, name it, identify the income that comes from the investment people will make in that and what your revenue will be. So if you haven't already done that profit pipeline, I want to invite everyone to do that this week. So again, this is about setting intentions about what we want to create, how we want to maximize the money that's going to keep flowing and the lives that we get to impact. So my question for you as we end today is what's your first domino? What's your, the easiest next step you can take to put your breakthrough money mindset in motion? in motion. And for me, what I realized going through the preparation of this worksheet is that my next steps for this week is to go and redo my financial abundance plan and my profit pipeline. I did those at the beginning of the year, but we're mid-year now, and it's time for me to renew those and recommit and to see where I am and to make adjustments. So that's part of my commitment, my first domino uh, for this coming week. So what about yours? And if you're watching this replay, I want to invite you to email me with your first domino and your commitments that you're making this week. So for Aisha and Gina, feel free to unmute yourself um, or type in the chat and let us know what your first domino is. And then we'll close out. Mine is really brief. I'm just going to go back and redo my pipeline also now that I've gotten a lot more clarity around my business this week. Excellent. Thank you, Gina. I'm going to, um, actually, I'm going to go back through the lesson and really just think about, you know, my mindset that I have around money. And um, after that, I'm going to get, you know, some mantras, uh, find some mantras and just start, you know, repeating those and getting those, you know, really in my mind. Excellent. And Aisha, one of the thoughts that I had as I was going through this is for your girls. Um, we can help them have a healthy relationship with money early on. Mm -hmm. So like us, they don't have to re- make some of their money mindset. Right. So I'm not sure if that's part of your blueprint or what you teach, but that might be something to think about. Yes. Yes. That that's so true. And I'm thinking about, you know, like just getting them to dream. So why wouldn't money go with that? Absolutely. Love it. Love it. So with that, I want to thank you ladies for being present, giving of yourself, sharing of your story, sharing your 
um, your fears and your dreams and the lessons that you've learned along the way. That blesses all of us and that also empowers us to tell our story and to create the life that we're created for. Next week, as we come back together, we are in the sixth week of this mastermind. So next week, so I'm pulling up our blueprint. Next week is week six, and so we're going to talk about our product marketing blueprint. So we're going to talk about how to use social media, how to begin to automate our business. So we're going to, I'm going to share um, a presentation framework, some social media planning. So we're going to think about, we've got businesses now. The question is, how do we get the word out to more people and to have greater impact? So that'll be coming um, early next week, and we'll be back next Monday, same time, same place, and I will see you soon. Have an amazing week and a happy 4th of July this week. Take care, everybody. Bye. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Thank you.